Hello, my name is Michael, and thank you for joining me today on this ArcDesk presentation dedicated to the renewable energy sector. We will dive into the software and show you how it works. I will have the pleasure today of showing how ArcDesk can transform your organization. And hopefully, by the end of this presentation, you will have a good understanding of the ArcDesk system. ArcDesk is a powerful platform dedicated to construction and capex intensive industries, such as the energy sector. It allows you to digitize project operations for your whole company. ArcDesk especially works great when there is a whole portfolio of projects to manage. ArcDesk is a truly flexible platform, allowing you to replicate your existing processes into a digital system. ArcDesk is also a complete platform, allowing you to manage your data from A to Z or from project idea up until maintenance. ArcDesk consists of many modules that can be enabled or disabled and configured to suit your way of working. From the obvious project management to estimation, tendering, procurement, document management, workforce scheduling, timesheets, advanced reporting, supplier management, and much, much more. Now, of course, we have limited time, so today we will focus only on a portion of these features. Enough of theory, let's dive right into it. Here we are presented with our company login screen. For this demo, we will use a fictitious company called Morgan Energy, specializing in photovoltaic installations. When we enter the platform, we are presented with dashboards. They are unique and totally configurable and should mimic your company process. In the example of this account, we start with feasibility studies then land acquisition, design and planning, construction and commissioning, and finishing at operations and maintenance. We also have a few other dashboards that might be helpful on a day-to-day -day basis. In ArcDesk, you can report data from across your whole company in real time, visualized in all kinds of formats. This account is set up so that every new project first needs to go through feasibility studies, we can see there are currently eight active projects in this phase. We can click on any of these processes and learn about the steps we need to take to advance this project to the next relevant phase. Once that's completed, the project would automatically move to the next relevant process. In this case, the land acquisition. This dashboard would then be visible to the relevant team members dealing with this process and would make it their base working screen. We currently have five projects in this phase. Once again, we can click on the process and see the stages we need to complete to take the project to the next department. The project then advances to design and planning, then to construction, commissioning, and finally to maintenance and operations. Of course, the whole process might be completely different in your organization. This is just an example. Let's navigate to a list of all projects. Here is a database of all the projects, wherever new, won, lost, active, or archived. As you can see, there are quite a few columns visible. Almost all these attributes can be configured individually for your organization. You can add as many of them as needed, display them in this table, or create a dashboard to report based on them in real time. For example, a dashboard showing the profitability of projects grouped by the individual project manager responsible. Let's go find a single project we are interested in and see the heart of ArcDesk. When we open the project, let's focus our eyes first on the menu on the left. These are all the different project modules. They all are dedicated to this particular project. Of course, depending on your role within your organization, you will have access only to the relevant modules and the others will be hidden from the menu. The details page of the project is your project card. 
Here you will find all the basic project information. All the different attributes and the widgets shown are also 100% configurable to suit your organization. You can also build all kinds of project-specific dashboards like shown here. For example, a dedicated project dashboard for the design and engineering teams. Here, you can, for example, visualize all models pending your approval or an activity log showing every change in the project since its inception. You can build a dedicated procurement dashboard showing all active and pending purchase orders. Or maybe an easy to read cash flow summary for this project. Let's go and view the process map of this project. This might feel familiar as you have already seen these processes on the global dashboards. Of course, every process and stage you see here is configured to perfectly suit your organization workflow. We read these from the bottom up. The project started with feasibility studies and has gone through these stages. It then went to land acquisition, to then go to design and planning and to construction. Now the project is in the commissioning phase, specifically at the system output verification stage. We can click on this stage to learn more about who and when last updated it. We can see a list of all outstanding tasks within and any documents uploaded at this stage. You can also design all kinds of forms inside of ArcDesk that might be required to complete certain stages. For example, this system output form. It asks the relevant technical questions the owner of this process to fill in. You can design all kinds of forms with an intuitive drag and drop editor and digitize all your existing paper forms into a digital process. This form can then be visible in the process stage and perhaps block the stage until the correct information has been submitted. You can build all kinds of blocks and different paths of the workflow depending on different project types or sizes of the project. This process map allows your organization to efficiently work on tens or even hundreds of projects at the same time and fully automate the delegation in your organization. Let's now click into the Contacts tab. Here you can see the associated contacts for this project. These could be your client details or any other external party like an investor or an engineer. ArcDesk comes with built-in CRM and SRM modules available in the main navigation. That's where all your contacts come from. In the Notes module, you can exchange your email and or any other notes about this project. To do functionality is where all your and your colleague tasks are held for this project. You are notified of your outstanding tasks across all projects in this red notification bubble. Let's move into the document management system for this project. You will probably spend a considerable time here as this is where all the documents concerning this project will be held and archived. Here you can see your desired folder structure and all documents within. Each document also has a set of configurable attributes that you can manage and filter by. ArcDesk supports most of the common data formats like PDFs, Word, Excel, and over 60 engineering 2D and 3D formats, including CAD and Beam. You can send your documents through the desired approval processes involving different people trigger revisions and publish the latest drawings, comment and annotate documents, and much more. Let's now take a look at project forms. As previously mentioned, in ArcDesk, you can build all kinds of forms through drag and drop editor. Here are a couple of examples of site forms, including daily progress report and a health and safety form. These forms can be submitted from ArcDesk or directly from the site using ArcDesk iOS and Android mobile applications. Forms can trigger approval processes, trigger other workflows, for example, health and safety procedures. They can also be shared externally, so for example, your customers or suppliers can fill in the feedback form during the handover stage. 
you can truly let your imagination wild with those highly configurable form systems. Let's take a look at RFIs, or Request for Information module. Here you can issue official queries internally or externally. RFIs can be distributed via email and answers are securely held in ArcDesk. Each project can optionally have a risk register. The risk register is a useful module for running your weekly project management meetings. Each risk is automatically calculated based on impact and probability and operates one of multiple strategies like mitigate, eliminate, or simply accept. Let's now take a look at ArcDesk Quotes module. You also might use terminology such as proposals, bill of quantities, bill of materials, or simply packages of work. This is one of the most fundamental and powerful modules in ArcDesk as it contains effectively the scope of the whole project. That's really where all the magic begins. Once your project is initiated, you will most likely start off here by building your quote, which then becomes the scope for scheduling, cost control, procurement, application for payments, and the whole project life cycle. You can import quotes from your existing Excel estimation sheets, or you can build advanced estimating systems directly in ArcDesk to cover all the different project types. Let's take a look at one quote on this project. Let's first go through the user interface. As you can see, there is a second level menu. This menu is directly related to this quote. Here we can see quote sections as well as many other functions. At the top, we see the configured approval process. Currently, this quote is still a draft. Underneath, we see some more financial metrics like the estimated value and estimated cost of the whole scope, some more basic attributes and a description of the quote. And at the bottom, attributes specifying the technology used on this project. These attributes are, of course, totally configurable. Let's take a look at one of the sections. Here you can see a quantified list of materials and services that are part of this project. This might look familiar to your existing bill of quantities. You can see all kinds of familiar columns around specification, costing, markup, as well as some more advanced ones like supplier data, tendering, procurement, and much more that for the benefit of time, we will skip today. You can add more lines into this section by adding simple items or adding items from your catalog. A catalog might be directly your stock availability or simply a supplier catalog you can upload into ArcDesk. You can build a database of all materials and services you use. You can build more complex systems such as this one. We can specify we need this system for a land covering 1.5 acres. ArcDesk will then calculate using predefined formulas all the necessary sub-items for the system covering this area. With just a couple of clicks, we can have the system with all necessary specification added to this quote. Each quote has its own file section where you can upload any other necessary documentation that will be shared as part of it. You can also agree on the various payment terms. ArcDesk supports two payment systems, a staged payment or an application of payment or sometimes called valuations. Here you can see we are proposing six payment stages upon completion of each milestone. You can easily change payment terms to one of the previously templated terms. Valuation systems are a little more advanced. ArcDesk will support you with generating reports, for example, every month with the completion status of the works. Upon approval of the application, you can issue invoices directly from ArcDesk. Once you are ready, 
you can issue this quote for approval. You can then send this quote to your customer through email using your desired email template. Or you can download it to various PDF, Word or Excel formats or simply share via external link. On a configurable public template, you can see your brand information, quote details, quote description, individual quote sections alongside items, payment terms, and finally, an approval or decline button with your terms and conditions. Once a quote has been approved, congratulations, you just secured your ArcDesk project. Now your project financial dashboard is alive and can report to you in real-time high-level financial performance of this project. Your estimated cost or the budget, the actual project value, the anticipated profit from your estimate, the actual gross profit based on real-time cost calculation of this project, your high-level cost control categories, alongside the estimate cost, as well as live actual cost. You can run a budget breakdown to find all the individual quote items within each category, their estimated value, actual purchase order value, and actual supplier invoice value. You can quickly find out where you made or lost your money. In ArcDesk, you can optionally run a much more complex and detailed cost controlling system using a budget, or sometimes known as a cost coding structure. Here you can define any cost coding system of any depth and complexity you desire. ArcDesk can report in real time all financial metrics against any of your cost codes, like approved budgets, estimated values, purchase orders, suppliers' valuations, invoices, variations to the work, and much more. You can manage detailed and high-level forecasting. You can even add your own columns and define a set of complex mathematical calculations needed on your project to deliver full financial compliance. ArcDesk can provide full financial transparency to your organization. It has proven to work on some of the most notable and largest CapEx projects around the world. Let's take a look at project scheduling. As you would expect, ArcDesk has a full Gantt chart module allowing you to freely schedule your workforce. Each project can contain multiple programs. Programs can be created directly in ArcDesk or imported from the likes of Excel, MS Project, Primavera P6, or Asta Power Project. Against each task, you can allocate not just your workforce contractors, but also assets, like a heavy machinery or vehicles. ArcDesk programs support all kinds of constraints against tasks for the purpose of critical path programming. Let's step out of this project for a minute. Let's navigate to ArcDesk company-wide scheduling feature. Here we can see all of our colleagues and their allocated program tasks against all projects, effectively our office whiteboard for many. From here you can easily track the allocation of tasks if anyone is free or overbooked. You can group the board by project to see the completion date of each project and resources allocated against them. You can have similar board in real time for your assets like machinery or vehicles, including any time off, for example, for servicing or shut down. Your board can be configured to suit your way of working, displaying just the right information at the right time for the perfect scheduling. Each task has its own details like completion, notes, custom forms, or other attributes you desire. You can also track planned and actual spent time.
ArcDesk has a powerful timesheet module that allows your workforce to clock in on site directly on their mobile phones and track each task separately. ArcDesk can additionally track the real-time location of labor on site during work hours and provide a detailed work report on daily, weekly, and monthly basis for payroll purposes. Each timesheet record will then automatically increase the cost of the project by multiplying the employee rate by the time spent. ArcDesk will then report your labor cost in real time on each project. ArcDesk can also automatically update your quote with completion levels directly from the program and therefore fully automate your application for the payment process, closing the full delivery life cycle, from quote to delivery to payment. ArcDesk has one of the most powerful procurement modules dedicated to construction and capex-intensive industries like the energy sector right here. Let's have a quick look. Let's imagine we are a procurement specialist tasked with buying the relevant materials based of this quote for this project. Now we could simply create a purchase order directly with just one click for any of those items. But let's make it a little bit more complex for us, and let's assume we don't know who the best supplier for these works is. So we should probably issue a tender and determine the best bidder. Let's create a quick tender for this section. It's as easy as just clicking Create a Tender and selecting relevant items. Once the tender is created, we are presented with a familiar user interface. At the top, we have our tender approval process. Of course, it's configured by your organization, and on the left are our tendered sections. We then need to select the suppliers we would like to participate in our tender. This table shows a list of available suppliers from our SRM module. This module on its own deserves a whole video on its own, but fundamentally, you can differentiate your suppliers by attributes just like your projects, for example, by the category, accreditation, performance score, or much more. Once the participants are saved, you can continue configuring the tender. You can optionally configure what we call evaluation criteria. With the evaluation criteria, ArcDesk will automatically recommend the best suppliers on the basis of criteria you specify. For example, lowest price, warranty length, lead time, or any other attribute you need ArcDesk to ask your participating suppliers. For the benefit of time, let me just quickly dive into a tender I have previously completed. As you can see, here we have four participating suppliers. Each of them has submitted an offer in one round. Of course, you can run as many rounds as needed to determine the best price and offer. ArcDesk has recommended the fourth supplier. You can view individual offers from the suppliers for each round. You can also ask ArcDesk for a price analysis. It will show you an easy-to-read comparison table between the suppliers. Alternatively, you can export the offer analysis into a configurable, downloadable Excel sheet where you can build your own custom criteria selection and determine the best supplier. Once the supplier is selected, ArcDesk will automatically update your quote with the selected suppliers and the prices provided. This whole tendering step could of course be totally optional or done at the estimation phase where it most likely makes the most sense. Fundamentally, as a procurement specialist, 
we need to order these materials. Now, knowing the suppliers and prices, we can issue a purchase order with just a couple of clicks. Let me show you a purchase order I have previously completed. Now we are in Arcdesk Purchasing Module. The interface again might feel similar. On the left, we have functionality accessible for this purchase order. At the top, the PO approval process. Then we have the PO attributes and contracted items with quantities and prices. At the bottom, we have the PO value, the delivered value, then the so far paid amount, the invoiced value, and finally, what is left to be invoiced by the supplier. Arcdesk, of course, can send those purchase orders to your suppliers, alongside any supporting documentation, and can actually create the legal contract document itself based of your existing templates. Arcdesk Procurement Module also has an optional valuation feature. If valuations are enabled, Arcdesk will automatically communicate with your supplier and ask them about an application of payments, a materials delivery proof, or a subcontracted work completion report. In this case, we can see the supplier has submitted two reports. Let's have a look. Here we can see the supplier is claiming that they have delivered works between the 3rd of October and the 12th of October, worth $614,199, that they would like to get paid off. The actual items with the delivered quantities are displayed below. Of course, if we do not agree with this valuation, we can make our own assessment of the work completed. Once the valuation is approved, it's now the supplier's job to send you the invoice. Here we can see this purchase order contains two purchase invoices. Invoices in Arcdesk are automatically reconciled against the purchase order, valuations, project, project budgets, and cost categories giving you full cost transparency and real-time insights. Again, a similar interface, menu on the left for the invoice, an approval process at the top, configurable attributes like supplier details, bank account numbers, etc. Invoice line items containing your accounting nominal codes, taxation, CIS scheme, etc. And finally, value of the invoice, optional retention, credit notes, payment information, due amounts, and more. Arcdesk can also store your actual payment data so that it knows the invoice was paid, but also provide a more detailed cash flow summary. Invoice is also automatically allocated against the project the project quote, a purchase order, and of course the supplier contact record. And as you would imagine, all this data across all projects is then immediately accessible on your dashboards for all kind of reporting needs, all in real time. Each user can have its own unique set of dashboards or they can be shared across departments. Of course, we managed to cover only maybe 25% of the platform. There is so much more to Arcdesk and so much more depth and configuration possibility of each of the modules. We would need to cover the advanced reporting capabilities, advanced access and data control systems, integrations with your ERPs and other tools, complex business workflows and gateways, and so much more. Our experienced implementation team will take your organization through quick and simple configuration process of Arcdesk. The beauty of the platform is that it allows you to constantly make changes to your way of working. Once your company grows, so does Arcdesk with you.
If you are interested in digitizing your organization with ArcDesk, please visit our website at arcdesk.com. One of ArcDesk consultants will be happy to take you through this exciting journey. Thank you for allowing me to show you the platform. Have a wonderful day.